What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. In this video today, I'm going to basically talk about how I prepare for surgeries. Um, a lot of people don't really understand that there's a lot that goes behind the scenes of uh, preparing for a surgery. Some people may think that, oh, we just walk into the operating room and perform surgery. Uh, but there's a lot of preparation that goes on behind the scenes, especially as a resident, you're still trying to learn how to do the surgery, how to, how to indicate the surgery, which means figuring out whether the patient needs surgery or not, and also the positioning of the surgery, what steps you should take, what happens when things go wrong, um, what medications to give them uh, before surgery and also after surgery. So it's a lot to know, uh, but I'm going to go over kind of briefly of what I do to prepare for surgeries. Make sure you guys subscribe and also hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos that are posted every week. Here we go. All right, so preparing for a particular surgery entails meeting the patient in the ER or a clinic when they present to you with a fracture. Um, I removed all the identifying information from this patient's x-ray, and this is just a x-ray of the ankle. And you can see here that the there's a fracture kind of right here in the uh, ankle joint, uh, above the ankle joint. But if you look on the, when they look, take an x-ray from the side, it's called a lateral view of the ankle, you can see this fracture like right here. So um, preparing for this particular surgery would entail just knowing that this is an operative case. This patient needs surgery because his ankle is unstable. Um, after that, we get labs to make sure that their labs are fine, that you check their blood levels, make sure their clotting factors are working. And then we get a chest x-ray if they're over a certain age, or we get an EKG, which is just a picture of their heart to make sure they don't have any heart abnormalities. All these things need to be taken care of and looked at prior to going to surgery because there's lots of risks associated with surgery. After all this is complete, we talk to the patient about surgery and I would say, hey, I recommend surgery to you. Um, and then we go over the risks, benefits, alternatives to the surgery. So you have to tell the patient, hey, this is it. You have an ankle fracture. I would recommend surgery. The risks associated with it are this. This is our alternative, but I, I don't think that we should go down that route. We should I would recommend surgery. So uh, usually surgeries when they're booked, um, I know about them, unless it's emergent, kind of going coming in on trauma, I know about them usually a day or two prior to uh, undergoing surgery. So what I usually do is look at their x-rays and then I kind of drew this out right here. This is just uh, my kind of pre-operative plan. This is uh, basically some screws that I would put right here to compress these fracture fragments right here. So it's, I would do this under, it's called a lag technique, which means um, putting screws in here that would compress this part here. And then going to the anterior posterior view or AP view of the, uh, of the ankle, uh, this is kind of what the construct would look like here. So this is a plate and some screws, a metal plate that goes on the outside of the fibula, this bone here and then possibly a screw across the ankle joint if the ankle joint is unstable. So usually it's around six screws, three at the bottom and then three above the fracture to kind of hold it in place. So that is kind of what preoperative, you should look at your x-rays and, and figure out what the patient may need in surgery. So when you go into surgery, you kind of have an idea of what to do. So some other resources that I use, um, this is a good resource here, it's called the operative dictations in orthopedic surgery and it's basically a a pdf or a book that essentially let me go up to the top that essentially details the steps of the surgery uh, because after each surgery uh, you have to basically type up or dictate which you're talking to a phone and recording and someone types it up for you you dictate the steps of the surgery so this has a lot of um, the basic surgeries in orthopedics i'm gonna go down to foot and ankle and let's look for one that has a uh, ankle fracture. A ankle fracture, 
The procedure will be open reduction internal fixation. These are some possible complications. And it basically just walks you through the steps of the surgery. And then when you dictate your surgery, you, you have to mention kind of all these things here. You use K-wires, you put a 2.7 millimeter drill, and then you placed four millimeter um, partially threaded cancella screws. So this is really good to, if you are not really familiar with the surgery, you can kind of read through this to see what is kind of the norm, what should happen in surgery. So another website that I use to prepare for cases is called the University of Wisconsin Gross Anatomy Dissections. So this is a website that's free and it has basically it's a professor that dissects the entire body. So each portion of the body, say for instance I'm doing an ankle fracture, uh, you need to know your anatomy. So I go down to the leg and foot here and this video right here will walk you through a particular dissection and it talks, it tells you which which muscles, it tells you the, the nerve supply, the person who does the, uh, the dissection. So this website is really good to review your anatomy and I use this uh, before cases to uh, refresh on my anatomy. So it's a constant refreshment of your anatomy. If you're a surgeon, you have to know the anatomy before you can do the surgery, so. So another website that I use is called Ortho Bullets. This is a website uh, for orthopedic uh, surgeons and residents, medical students. This basically tells you um, kind of the steps of the surgery. It tells you that you should mark out your lateral malleolus, uh, that you should make an incision four to six centimeters in length. Uh, you should open up your fracture site, watch out for the superfi superficial perineal nerve. Uh, you should drill with a uh, 2.7 millimeter drill or a 3.5 drill. And then you should, um, basically tells you the steps of the surgery. So this is a website, orthobullets.com that we use in orthopedics. And it has pretty much all the top topics in um, orthopedics. This is spine surgery right here, so spinal cord injuries. Tells you about the uh, spinal cord injuries and what you should look for and neurogenic shock, spinal shock. Um, it also tells you like foot and ankle. You can look at um, Achilles tendon rupture and when to fix them, how to fix them. So this is a really good website to use, orthobullets.com. So this is another good website called the AL uh, Foundation. Uh, this is a website that we use in orthopedics and it basically you can pick out different parts of the body. Say for instance, let's go back to the uh, beginning of this website and say for instance, we're working on the, um, let's say the humerus. Someone has a fracture of their humerus, you can click on approach um, if we're going to use a, let's say, anterior lateral approach to the humerus, this tells you make your skin, skin incision here. You're going to carry that down, superficial dissection, deep dissection, and then watch out for this, the radial nerve, mobilize it. So this is a good website to uh, learn kind of the steps of the surgery. It's called aofoundation.org. Um, this is a, a site that orthopedic surgeons use to uh, fix fractures and also has some veterinarian. Let's see, I've never used this before. Let's check it out and see. So a lot of these you have to log in for, but say for instance, a this animal here has fractures of his, looks like his toe. Uh, you can fix it with screws. So it tells you essentially how to fix it. So pretty, pretty cool website here. So I'm a very dimensional, three-dimensional person, so I have to see things. So one of the things I have at home is our models. Say, for instance, we, uh, we're fixing a pelvis fracture tomorrow. I have a model at home that would uh, I'd look at, and I try to plan my trajectory of, of screws. Say, for instance, this patient has, has a uh, fracture of their sacrum, or their um, this is the ilium and the sacrum. They have a fracture right here, and we need to uh, put a screw kind of in this trajectory to uh, go across and fix this portion of the bone here. So having a model and actually looking at it, holding it in, in your hands can be very helpful because it gives you a 3D kind of um, 
look at it. So uh, I know my starting point for my screw needs to go in this direction here and it needs to go across the sacrum. Uh, there are some nerves that run right here, the L5 nerve root on both sides. So if you go to, to anterior or to the front, you can hit that nerve and damage that patient's nerve. If you go too low, there's another nerve that runs right through this little hole right here called your foramen, the, S, the S1 nerve root. So it has to be very precise. Um, you have to use, we use x-ray in surgery. So I use this model to kind of uh, look at it prior to surgery and just review my orientation. So I know what to, uh, what to do in the uh, day of the surgery. And the last thing is books. So uh, if you're a surgeon, you have to know your particular anatomy. Um, that's one thing is to know what the particular condition is. Say for instance, cervical stenosis, you have to know what that is and you have to know when that patient would need surgery. You have to know how to perform the surgery. So uh, knowing your anatomy is very crucial. There's a book called uh, Nutter's Concise Orthopedic Anatomy, the Atlas of Orthopedic Anatomy. And it basically it's a little small book and it, it, it uh, goes over the anatomy. It goes over the uh, blood supply here. You don't want to damage any of those arteries or veins or nerves um, and the muscle insertion, insertion and origins. You have to know where everything inserts at so you know where it is in surgery. So I use this anatomy book here to uh, review my anatomy. This is a um, Rockwood and Wilkins fracture in children's. Um, if you're doing a fracture in a kid, you want to, you want to review your anatomy prior to uh, surgery. So. And this is a good book to kind of read about uh, different con conditions prior to surgery. Another one is um, Surgical Exposures in Orthopedics. It goes over the exposures of, or of uh, different procedures. Say, for instance, an uh, anterior lateral approach to the elbow. Um, how do you position the patient? They're going to be supine. They're going to have their arm over the chest. You need to make this incision right here. You need to watch out for that nerve right there. Put your retractors in certain positions. This is how you need to position your forearm. Uh, so these are kind of books and this is uh, what I normally do to prepare for surgeries. So that's essentially how I kind of prepare for cases. Um, you have to know your the pathology, the uh, physiology first, and you have to know the pathology, what goes wrong when the physiology is, is uh, off. So the, these particular conditions, um, you have to know when a patient needs surgery and when to operate and when not to operate so you, you are a safe uh, surgeon. Um, you have to not only do that, but you have to know the steps of the surgery. Before you do that, you have to know your anatomy. So there's a lot to learn. Um, it's a lifelong, being a doctor is a lifelong process. You're constantly reviewing your anatomy. You're constantly reviewing the steps of the surgery. You're constantly reviewing... Um, you know, the patient's x-rays and kind of going through the steps in your head. I actually saw a plastic surgeon who has been a physician probably for about 15, 20 years. And he had uh, some of these anatomy books in his case the other day out in the surgery room. He was reviewing it the night before. So, and he's been a surgeon for 15, 20 years. So you're going to be constantly reviewing your anatomy, constantly going over the steps of the surgery, like I said, in your head. And um, even if you're out practicing 10, 15 years, um, these things never, the anatomy never changes. So you have to know your anatomy, learn it well the first time, but surgery is very stepwise. You have to know the steps of the surgery. You have to know how to position the patient in surgery, what happens when things goes, goes, goes wrong. Um, if the nurses call you and say there's a problem with your patient after surgery and they're up on the floor and they're, or it, which means in the hospital or in the recovery room or the patient's already at home, you have to know how to deal with the complications. So that's why surgery residency is five years <laughs> because uh, it's a lot to learn and uh, you just have to take it day by day and you have to be disciplined in your studies and, you, you, um, and it'll eventually come to you, but uh, with repetition. So. This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Also hit the bell notification. That allows you to receive updates and uh, notifications from YouTube that I put new videos out every every uh, week. So also visit my sponsors over at disabilityquotes.com um, and check them out for a free quote from uh, them today. Thank you guys and uh, we'll see you next time.